Act this morning, and also Jack Welsh, who's the founder of Jack Welsh Management Institute, and Susan Welsh, his wife, who's also a best-selling author. They're both columnists as well for Reuters. Thanks for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. I know you guys have a new column out, in fact, today, uh, Jack, and it's all about Ron Paul, and your takeaway is get out of the race. Why do you tell him that? Well, I'm not saying that. Uh, our column is to tie up uh, current events to business issues, and we, we're saying that, in our view, Ron Paul will not be a finalist in, the, in this campaign, and that the GOP is going to have to exit him just as you have to exit employees. So the management l lesson here is the same one you have with employees. When you let them go, you've got to let them go with dignity and voice. You've got to take care of them because they're going to be suppliers, customers, friends, recommendations. You want them as your friend. Ron Paul is going to le exit left on this stage sometime down the road before August or in August. And the GOP doesn't want to lose those wonderful voters that he's brought on board. So how well they treat Ron Paul going forward is a very big deal, just the way how you lay off employees is a very big deal. Let me, I'm just going to run a little bit of what your column says uh, about Ron Paul, and it says this, Paul and his followers promised to be a lot like that fired employee who, if handled incorrectly at farewell, will make it his life's work to, if not bring your organization down, at least show you how very wrong you were to cut the cord. What are, it sounds like you're very concerned about the potential downside of a bad Ron Paul exit. Is that right? Is that fair to say, Susie? You know, Paul's followers are not party regulars. He's not a party regular, um, but he really has these very, very impassioned uh, followers. Uh, all four of our children are huge Ron Paul followers, so we're living with this. And if you let them go, uh, they're not going to go into the booth, and they're not going to pull the lever for whoever the nominee is, but probably Romney, it looks like at this point. They're not going to pull that lever. And so you have to engage them and say, not like this is a booty prize or few he's gone. You have to say, okay, what were the issues you really cared about? And so it's very important. If you alienate them, uh, you will either they'll stay home or they'll work against you. Let me ask, you guys have said that he is the perfect, Mitt Romney I'm speaking about now, is the perfect candidate. But when you look at the poll numbers, and there's a new Quinnipiac poll that I want to throw up on the screen, Mitt Romney at 38% is where he's polling, Newt Gingrich at 29%. And it's almost exactly the flip of a poll we got yesterday, which the NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, which showed Newt Gingrich at 37% and Mitt Romney at 28%. If he's such a perfect candidate, why does that message not seem to get out to anybody else? Well, so, so uh, that's a great question. Until last night, his debate pump, uh, performances had certainly not been those of the perfect candidate. Uh, l last night, he did shine in the debate, and I think you'll see that reflected in the, in, in the Florida results, but we'll have to say. But last night was his best night on the debate stage. Up, up to that time, he had not been a rising star, although he has every credential one would want whether it be in business, whether it be in saving the, uh, the Olympics, and, and I think you remember that, and, uh, and, uh, and when he was governor, he's had all the right experience to go there. You know, he has great credentials. There yeah, obviously business, is some kind of... Go ahead, Susie. I'm, I'm saying there is some kind of connect. There is a, you know, I think his credentials are, as Jack says, and there has obviously been some kind of connection gap with the voters, some kind, you know, authenticity um, issue. And I think people have trouble believing or, or, or coming to terms with the fact that he is the Boy Scout he appears to be. Well, you know what, and I would change that a little bit. I'm going to open this up to our, our panel as well because I want to ask them a question. I'll come back to you guys, which is, I don't think the Boy Scout thing is, is exactly framing it correctly. I, I think some of it is the self-inflicted wounds where he talks about his money managers and he's talked about his lawyers and trying to give money to his kids. He, he went to, I was attending an event where he was talking about telling people who were unemployed, I'm unemployed too, which was technically true, but probably unwise. When you talk about having a trustee and having a trustee make decisions about your millions of dollars of investments, when you talk about having a supposed secret Swiss bank account, these are not things that the average voter can relate to. And that's his problem. But he, he has, his problem is one of followership, not leadership. His, his core problem, his selling point was he was the governor who brought universal health coverage to his state. And when you say you can't talk about the single thing that you 
you did that was best and biggest, then obviously all these other side issues take on form. The, the, the Mitt Romney we saw in 2006 ought to be the Mitt Romney we take to the country in 2012. All right, let me ask a final question to Jack and Susie. Um, and I want to tell you, everybody should look at the, the Reuters article. It's really fascinating, I thought, about Ron Paul. But I want to ask about New Cambridge. Let's say, hypothetically, nobody ever asked or answers my hypothetical questions, but I'm going to try again <laughs> anyway. Hypothetically, New Gingrich is the candidate. Do you, as Republicans, say, okay, we will support him? Well, I will clearly uh, support the Republican nominee against the current incumbent under any circumstances. All right.